Welcome back, everyone. I hope you enjoyed your cupcake or your healthy option. Um, I'm Nancy Morris. I work with the Maine Health Management Coalition, and I want to welcome back some uh, people who we introduced to you last year. They are the CEO Champions Team. This is a team that we put together to help encourage wellness at the work site. And we have some updates on our group. And I want to, first of all, tell you why we um, put together the CEO Champions program. There were, as you can imagine, multiple reasons. There's 200 studies that say wellness programs have several returns on that investment. But we also thought that it was important because we had worked so hard with clinicians in the state to report on how well they provided the care experts recommended that we needed to make sure that patients were encouraged to do the right thing too. So next slide, I hope. Okay, thanks. Um, this is a, a well-known study that was put together um, that talked about how many patients got the care that experts recommend. It was a landmark study at the time done by the Rand Corporation. And what we found out was in total, 50% of patients who were being treated for chronic illness weren't getting the care that experts recommend. Here in the state of Maine, through the Get Better Maine reporting, we have done a good job of increasing that number substantially. Next slide. And that led us to have one of the strongest growth in providing evidence-based care in America. We could still do a little better, as you can see from the chart, but we certainly are headed in the right direction. But we recognize that just providing evidence-based care wasn't enough and that patients needed to be encouraged to do what the doctor suggested because many times it's adopting lifestyle changes that will help them substantially. So through the CEO Champions program, we thought we would tap into CEOs to have them be an example for their coworkers and to generate enthusiasm and frankly, tell people <laughs> inside their organizations to institute a wellness program. Studies show that when the CEO is involved in the wellness program, it has um, much more adoption by the employees. And so we put together a team. You might remember that Dominique Wilkins came in to kick off the team. You also might remember that was the day they announced all the people who were involved in the Kennebunk um, Zumba class. And uh, it wasn't exactly uh, the big turnout that we thought it would be, but it was still a great event because all of the CEOs um, really got into it, including Dominique, um, and he was there to tell everybody what it's like to be a diabetic and to explain to them how important he felt wellness was and to encourage those CEOs to have another impact, an impact on their employees. And so um, it was quite funny to see Dominique leaving with pointing, saying, we're doing this in Atlanta, we're going to beat you. Um, and meanwhile, the CEOs in Maine didn't hear it because they were all telling each other they were going to do that. And so it's been a great year for those CEO champions and for us to watch them. They were guided during this year through with Phil DeRusso, who couldn't be more excited about instituting wellness programs. And Phil, where are you? Phil, Phil, <laughs> we we did do a um, we did an evaluation of the program, and everybody who was involved in the program said we love Phil. Phil helped us on, keep on track, and we're so glad that we had his support. So thanks again, Phil, for doing a great job. So now we want to tell you how the year ended up looking. We used the hero scorecard. Okay, next slide, sorry. And this is how much people went up on the hero scorecard inside of our group. The next slide will tell you, oops, sorry, wrong, sorry, wrong, I forgot a slide, forgot a slide. So as you can see, um, the group who um, increased their um, use of evidence-based guidelines for wellness programs was Anthem. And unfortunately, the CEO of Anthem is unable to be here today, 
but we are very lucky to have his coworker, Leslie Lampert, to tell you as an employee what she thought of having a wellness plan at her work site. So I actually made myself some notes, although I'm not normally a person who speaks from notes, but I wanted to make sure I hit on the points that, um, that Trevor had asked me to touch on, as well as um, make sure I told you a lot about my story. Um, you know, Anthem as a company uh, is national, and we have a lot of fitness programs that are in place and wellness programs that are in place to help us as employees get better. But in Maine, we've been very lucky to have Dan as our leader. Um, we have the number of uh, the number of events is too long to list, but a few of them are Know Your Numbers. We have a fitness challenge every year. We have a Fat to Fit. We have a Maintain Not Gain. We have an on-site wellness center. We have discounts to different um, weight loss programs, Jenny Craig, Weight uh, Weight Watchers, etc. Um, but for me, my journey. Um, has been on and off with the wellness programs, but last year it started with Know Your Numbers. And I went in, and there's three components to Know Your Numbers. We've got smoking cessation. Well, I don't smoke, that was an easy one. Blood pressure. Well, I tend to have low blood pressure, so that was an easy one. And the last one was BMI, and I knew I was on the edge. I went in, and I lost it by a couple of pounds, and I lost $200. $200, that's a lot of money. So that got me thinking, um, and, then, and I know this has the same effect on my peers too. They come in and they do the same thing. They go, wait a minute, I could have had $200 if I had just done this. Because it's not just the BMI measurement, it's if you also lose 5% of your body weight. So, you know, if you're way over the BMI and you're making progress, you still get your $200. So it's about getting healthy. Um, so I joined the fat to fit program this year. And the Fat to Fit program is actually very, very unique to the main plan. And this program is designed to make your body more bioactive. All of you, I'm sure, especially the older women in the room, have gone on weight loss programs and you eat less and less and less and you still can't lose anything. And so you start to think there's something wrong with you. And what I learned through this program was by um, building muscle and incorporating the cardio, but really focusing on building up that muscle. And I know some of you are doctors, I saw the titles and you're going, yeah. <laughs> but building that muscle makes your body more bioactive. And as your body becomes more bioactive, you're burning more calories at rest, and then all of a sudden, the weight loss kicks in. So at the end of the Fat to Fit program this year, I actually won for the females, I lost almost 50% of my body fat, but I only lost 15 pounds. I gained 36 pounds in body, in, in body muscle. So I made myself healthier and gave myself the tools to continue to lose weight and get myself into a really healthy category. Still a little work to do, but we're getting there. Um, most of my peers saw the same thing. After six weeks, only six weeks on the program, there was an average decrease in body fat of 5.1%. And um, most were actually shocked because this is one of those programs that you keep weighing yourself and you keep weighing yourself and you go, oh, it's not working, it's not working. And then you go in, you get your body fat tested and all of a sudden you realize you've made a lot of progress. Um, so that, that to me was one of the best programs. And then, right when we were finishing that up, we started our fitness challenge. So, oh, by the way, I did get my $200 this year. <laughs> I got it back. <laughs> um, and, and I know that a number of people have the same experience, whether it's quitting smoking by using the smoking cessation tools that are available here in Maine or through some other national organizations, and high blood pressure, um, dealing with how to manage your blood pressure, either through diet, exercise, or medication, if people deal with it and they bring it down to healthy levels, they get that $200 as well. So it's a total of $600. And um, to me, it is these programs that drive the health behaviors and actually support our um, purpose, which our corporate purpose is together we're transforming healthcare with trusted and caring solutions. We have to live our purpose in our own backyard. 
So if we, we can't go out and tell everybody else, well, you know, you need to be healthy, but we're not going to do it. We have to do it first. And that's where Dan comes in as a CEO in our company. When we have our fitness challenge and he wants us riding a bike out in front of the company, literally, um, he's out there too. Um, and I, I've seen a couple of WellPoint employees around here, and I do use WellPoint and Anthem interchangeably, same company. Um, but he said he'll be out there for an hour on the bike too. I've seen him in spin class. I've seen him living the behaviors that he's asking us to live. Um, when I started at Blue Cross, which was almost 18 years ago, we didn't have anything. <laughs> we, when I went into the cafeteria, it was the nastiest junky food we had. We didn't have a fitness room. We didn't have anything. And I really thought that was contradictory for who we were supposed to be. We were supposed to be a health benefits corporation, and yet we weren't living those values. Well, now, 18 years later, we are. We're living them every single day. We have, um, we've added things this past year. We have added meditation classes. So now, an hour at lunch, we can take a meditation. And you know what? It's available for people who are in the office and who call in, who are at home. So now that's, that's a tool that people can use to balance their life, because our new focus is on balance. Um, let me just see if I've covered most of my notes. Um, really what I've learned from all of these programs is it is about a lifelong commitment to health. It's about choosing to do something every day that helps your health whether it's meditation, whether it's exercise, whether it's eating right, or all of them, so that you can have the full balance. And that is what the programs that Dan has brought to our company, um, and he's supported in our company. And that is why um, I'm really proud to actually be here for him. Um, I wish he could have been here, I wish you all had, could have seen him and you could have spoken, but thank you for giving me the few moments to do this. Here's the award for <laughs> Anthem won the award for most improved, but we also had another award for the CEO champion who assisted the others and others in the community to start wellness programs and improve the wellness of their community. And that award we're giving tonight, or this afternoon, to Steve Woods from Tidestorm. Thank you very much, Shannon. Uh, the last year, when we were first contacted by Nancy and worked with Phil and, and uh, the entire organization, uh, it's been nothing but a positive experience, not just in terms of the quantifiable results within our organization. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that guy almost looks electable. <laughs> and here I come in looking a little scuffy. Oh, there's a healthcare reason why I, I didn't quite meet the fashion bar for, for today's event. And I mentioned it to Nancy a few minutes ago, and I'll get back on track. Um, my wife and I have three children, and we, we live in Yarmouth, and we brought up our, our three children uh, in Yarmouth. And a few years ago, our oldest daughter elected to uh, go to school down in North Carolina. And we got a call a few months ago, uh, very an excited call, and it was, guess what? I'm having a baby. And I was like, you know, took a little while. My wife was like, you want to be called Poppy, Papa? And she was trying to come up with names in other languages so it didn't feel so old. So we never settled on the, the right name. And uh, my, uh, my daughter and her partner said, well, a couple months ago, they said, we want to come back to Maine. We want to have our baby in Maine. We want to start a family in Maine. We want we we that's where we want to be. So a couple months ago they moved up, and uh, there's a number of little kind of nexus points to the story. One is that uh, my daughter is 23, is also lucky based on one of the core elements of the Affordable Care Act that 
she's able to be part of my insurance, which is something that, as a young person going to school and starting out, was a was a meaningful um, meaningful element for her. And so she and her boyfriend came up, and they got a place, and and uh, I, I think we just. You know, Poppy, I think that's, I still don't know how that name feels, but uh, this morning at 7.58, my daughter gave birth to a healthy boy. And uh, so, whatever name we like to go by, I kind of like uh, Steve or Steve. Or <laughs> but I know it needs to be something more traditional, but uh, I just spent the last three hours at Mercy Hospital. And uh, on the third floor, they have one of the most incredible um, maternity birthing uh, facilities I've ever seen. Uh, our children were born down in Atlanta. When we lived down here, we moved up uh, 13, 14 years ago. The staff were incredible, the service, the prenatal care. And so I know we're talking about corporate health and wellness, and we're talking about what we can do as, as corporate citizens. But in my view, uh, in regard to Maine, whether it involves corporate enterprise or whether it involves the great work being done in academics. Uh, my, my good friend, Dr. Rippich, is here, and uh, the work being done at UNE is incredible, and as well as other institutions here. I had the pleasure of interviewing um, Dora Mills, who's played a key role in healthcare in Maine for many, many years. Uh, last week, and, uh, I had a little bit of a question about the flu shot. She assured me I needed to absolutely get the flu shot. So she made a house call to my radio show. Which was like, that was really the, uh, the, the, the ultimate motive on having her come on the show for my own personal health questions. But Maine is the best place in my mind in the whole world. You know, I've traveled to all 50 states, worked in all 50 states, in about 30 countries. And for my wife and I, our family, we really um, cherish the opportunity and the, and the joy of living here in Maine. And I think that both for our today and our tomorrows, healthcare and education are the two core building blocks. So the work being done here through this corporate program, but the work that you are all involved in, I think goes beyond just a, a, a conference. I think it's really core to the Maine's future. Um, in addition to that, one of uh, the companies that we have at Time Smart is called Pro America Health. Last year we did 242,000 health screenings. We're the largest health screening agency in the country. So we have mobile vehicles and we have retail sites all across the country. And it's something that um, we want to do because not just, not just because of the business enterprise, but because the type of work and the type of uh, impact we feel like we can make has been very, very positive. And for me personally, being part of this program has been very rewarding. And uh, my plan after today is to lose the sympathy weight I put on with my dog. <laughs> it's a new medical phenomenon. You hear about spouse weight, grandpapa weight is a whole new... We'll have clinical studies any day now, and I'll be like, it's a real thing, grandpapa weight. But in all seriousness, this is something very special, and not only do I want to thank the organization, but also the other folks who are part of this, because it really been, has been a very cooperative, collective endeavor. And so thank you all for coming, and thank you for the support. Thank you. Our CEOs really have been an all-star team. Um, now they are going to work with a school in their community to help get the little ones in their in these employees' homes to nag the parents in addition. So we have the work nag and then the home nag. And so um, we think we're gonna help on having that message go over and over again. And then um, very soon we'll announce through our newsletter the next set of CEOs who will be coming in. But you've been a wonderful group. I have awards for, for the rest of you. So Danielle Rivich from UNE, will you please come up? Mark Rees from the City of Portland. And Andy Weber from the Maine Health Management Coalition. Now, we do have four of the CEOs in next year's team all set up. 
but in case anybody's got a burning desire, desire to join this team, please um, let us know because we do have one more slot for next year. So again, thank you. Now I'm going to introduce